In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the console commands from turning it on without using mods or editing files, which are my most commonly used, and how to use autofill to find as many as you need. Let's start with turning on the console command. You start by holding Alt and pressing the tilde key. This brings up the console command right here. If you want to make it bigger, you can drag it like this. I usually do that. Then you type in config.cheat underscore mode space one. All these commands are going to be in the description, so don't worry about memorizing anything. You could just reference that. So we press enter, that turns it on. If you want to turn it off, you do the same thing, but replace the one with a zero and cheat mode is off. Now, why would you ever want to turn it off or on? When you turn cheat mode on, it actually slows down the loading process when you go to your inventory screen or your party menu screen, which we'll see later. It is kind of nice to turn it off so your game runs smoother. We'll turn it back on and let's start looking at some of the most commonly used ones. So we'll start with adding Renown to your clan. It's campaign.addRenown to clan, and then a space, and then whatever number you want. So if you wanted to just start with, say, clan tier 1 or clan tier 2, so you can start off as a mercenary or a vassal, you can do that. Or if you want to start off with as much as you want, just go to straight to clan tier 6, just type in 10,000, and then that puts you exactly where you need to be. So if you look right here, clan tier 6, we don't have to worry about leveling that up anymore. We get a big party size right from the start. Got to refresh that sometimes. There, it's updated. Now, just as important as Renown, or maybe even more so, is gold. So we're going to do campaign, add gold to hero, and we'll type in just a bunch of zeros. I don't know how many that is. That gives us 10 million. Uh, we probably don't need that much, but what, why not, right? The bank is open. So you've got all that gold. What do you spend it on? Well, probably some troops, right? So campaign.give underscore troops. We don't know the tags for any of the troops, right? Unless you memorize it, and I'm not a savant. So I usually go off of the menu. So if you type in space, help, it will bring up an entire list of all the troops in the game. And the cool thing about this is, if you're using a mod, like for instance, in this case, I have True Armies of Calradia, it includes all of those units as well. So you can see exactly how to enter them in so that you can get those added to your party. So we're going to go with Give Troops Space and then Batanian underscore Bian underscore Champion. And then we're going to add 100. So if you look down here in the bottom right, we just added 100 units to our party. However, no OP army is complete without your cons guards. So we just added another 100 cons guards. So if you go over here to the party screen, you'll see we've got Bian Champions and cons guards 100 of each. One interesting thing that happens when you add even a single unit from the cheat menu, it actually gives you a plus 5,000 party size. So if you want to have a massive party, you can do that. Just add one unit of any kind from the console command and it will update this. If you close out of that game and load it back up later, this gets cleared. So you do have to do it every time. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And since we're on the party screen, there is another way to get any troop you want. If you look here on the left, normally this would be blank, but because we have the cheat menu on, it does list all the available units in the game, only in increments of 10. So you can't add like a thousand people all at once. You'd have to do it one by one, but you can get an idea of what troops are in the game. So let's say we wanted to add archers. We just get a, a smattering of archers, get a couple cavalry and some infantry, maybe get some low tier trash, and then we can go like that. If you don't want to have to look them up on the help menu, but you only want, say, 50, you can just come in here, move this slider. So now we have 20. We're going to cycle back in, add 30, and two more times to get up to 50. So like I said, you don't have to necessarily know the tags of all the units. This is an easy way to get a small number of units. But if you know the tags, you can just add exactly how many you want. I've had parties up to 10,000 troops. One cool trick after you do something like this where it clogs up your screen, if you right click and you hit clear, it will clear the console command so you can actually see what you're typing in. It's helpful because you'll get messages if you type it in wrong, it'll tell you what you typed in wrong. So we've got enough money to pay for our troops. We've got the troops in our party, but they're going to starve if we don't do anything. So let's go ahead and add some food. You do campaign dot give item to main party space and then whatever food type you want. In this case, let's just give them grain. So we have 321 units. So let's go ahead and add 400 grain. So if you look right down here, it added 400 grain and we have two apples. That's from the mod. Now you can actually add any unit in the game in any quantity, you just have to know the tag. Now, unfortunately, you have to look this up. I think there's a post on Reddit somewhere. If you just Google item tags, it'll show up. It's really a pain in the butt. Honestly, it's probably not worth it. Usually I just use it for the food and the food's pretty self-explanatory. There's some that the name's a little bit off, but if you just play with it, you'll, you'll figure it out. Another way you can add items to your inventory is just going straight to the inventory screen with console commands turned on, and then you can add units of 10. Well, in this case, it's just gonna be banners. Let's go up to the food. So let's say 
say we want to have some of each of the food types. So now we've got 10 of each. That gives us a decent amount. We'll start getting steward XP if that's what you want to do. Or let's say you want to start outfitting your guys with the best of the best. So you go to the armor tab, filter it by value, and you just start picking up all the stuff that's at the top. Now, in this case, I have open source armory. So if you look how big this, this menu is, it is massive. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of things to choose from. So it, it takes a little while doing it this way. In the base game, you're not going to have this many things to pick from. So it's, it's going to be a bit easier to do. But man, did the armor look really good in open source armory. I do recommend it if you're able to mod your game. There we go. We've got him a nice set. Let's give him the best horse money can buy. Although he probably won't be able to ride it, which we'll fix that at some point. We'll give his horse the best looking armor we can get. We can pick up weapons, shields, all that stuff from here. And like I said, you could add these manually if you know the ID tag for them, but it's a bit of a pain. So I usually just go shopping here. So we've got our army. We've got money. We've got food but we don't have a very good character, right? We start with a bunch of basic stats. So let's go ahead and fix that. First thing, very important, we wanna add attribute points, right? Campaign, add attribute points to hero, space, and then whatever number you wanna use. So let's just add 100. We come in here, now we've got 103. We can just spam it out until everything's maxed out. And then we'll obviously do the same thing for the focus points. Looking right here, everything's maxed on attribute points. We still have some left over. who cares? We just want an OP guy, right? Now we're gonna do the same thing for the focus points. And in this case, let's do 200 because there are a lot of skills and we can go five on each. So we'll probably run out if we don't. And so we just just fill this out. Now we've got 10 attribute points, 10 focus points into each. We can really make a good character if, if that's what we're going for. I can hear it now. Well, what if I don't want to farm up? It takes too long. You can just add skills to your hero. So we do campaign, set all skills, main hero. And then in this case, you cap out at 300. You can't go over it. Well, there's ways to do it, but it's kind of a pain in the neck. But 300 is the max they'll let you do through the console commands. If you see right here, now everything's maxed out at 300. We can pick all the perks. And because we have 10 attribute points and 10 focus points, we're still going to be earning XP trying to get up to that 330 maximum limit. So we've got our OP army. We've got tons of money, food to feed them, really good gear, but we want to share this experience with somebody else. So let's add some companions. Let's say we want five companions to join us on this journey. So we're going to use the command campaign, add companions, space, and then the number that you want. In this case, five. And you see it'll pop up right here. Let's go in there and check out our companions. Now, these are all dumpster fires. They're literally zero, zero. They do have one focus point in it, everything, but they're, they're terrible. They're awful. They just default like that. But do not worry. We can fix that. We go back to the console commands. We type in the command campaign, set all companion skills space. And then again, we'll give them the same 300. And then looking back here, now they are all complete chads all five of them. Now let's say the items from the cheat menu aren't quite up to your standards, you want better weapons. Then you got to start doing some crafting. We need some crafting materials to start off with. So campaign, give all crafting materials to main party space. So let's just go a thousand. That's fine. And we come into the smithy and you'll notice we've got 1000 of each. That's plenty. We can for sure make that work. However, there's a problem. We have to go through and unlock all the parts, which we all know is a pain in the butt. Unless we use this command, campaign.unlock all crafting pieces. We go back to the smith and we can make literally whatever we want because we have all the parts unlocked. We have smithies with 300 skill and all the good perks and we have tons of crafting materials. So now we can really customize our companions and our own loadout however we want and have a good time doing it. Now, if you're like me and you sometimes want to do some interesting scenarios that you need to set up, but you don't want to go through a full campaign just to get to the starting point, then you can do it through the console command. So in this case, we don't have any fiefs. We are landless, but we can change that. So we're going to start off with campaign give settlement to player. And let's go ahead and give ourselves Remtoil Castle. So Remtoil Castle with the space between each and it will pick it up. So notice it does give us the castle. Now we need to go over there and get stuff fixed, but you know who walks? Poor people. Poor people walk. Cheaters fly around we can zoom around you do this by holding control and then left clicking on the map this will allow you to zoom wherever you want so let's go into our castle and just like that we own it so we've got everything we need we've got a castle troops money but we're feeling a little bit lonely we want to share it with somebody so let's go shopping for a wife we could go through some chat checks and probably fail or we can waste our money or we can just use the console command so let's go ahead and do this with Aonag. So we go to the console command and use campaign dot marry player with hero space and then whoever you're trying to marry. And in this case, unfortunately, marriage is not suitable between I am a filthy cheater and Sayonag. Let's find out why. So if you go down to the bottom, he is actually married to Branagh, which is a problem. But it's really not because we can use campaign dot kill hero Branagh. And just like that, he is a ghost. Let's go marry our dream girl. And just like that, we got a wife with face tattoos. Nice. 
Now this is a great start, don't get me wrong, but what if you wanted to roleplay a little bit differently and become the king of Batania to start with? Well, you can do that pretty easily right from day one. We're going to use the console command campaign join kingdom and we'll type in Batania and just like that we become a vassal. And going in here you can see our clan is actually part of Batania. But that's not good enough for us. We want to actually lead the kingdom because the AI is really stupid. So we type in campaign, lead your faction. No pomp and circumstance. We are now the leader of Batania and we can do as we wish. Well, not exactly though, because we don't actually have any influence, but don't worry, we can add that too. Campaign, add influence. We're gonna give ourselves 100,000 because we're gonna need it. These guys are idiots and they're gonna wanna vote for 10 wars at once. We can come in here and we can do whatever we want. We've got money, troops, influence, we're the king, we've got a wife, life is good. So all those commands should get you set up for just about any scenario you want to set up. However, if you want to run different types of tests or maybe a time lapse, there's a few other commands you're going to need to know. One of my favorites that I use all the time is campaign multiply campaign speed or is basically the default for fast forward. But if you're wanting to run time lapses, you probably want to run it at least at 100. I recommend actually higher. I would go anything below 200. If you have a really good computer, you can go up to five or even a thousand. So in this case, let's just cap it at 300. I'm gonna zoom out and there will be a flash warning here. I'm gonna let it run for just a sec so you can see what it does. A little bit of blinking. If you wanna get rid of that blinking, there's actually a console command for that too. So we're gonna not use the campaign function. This one, we're actually using atmosphere.set interpolation TOD, which stands for time of day. And we're gonna be typing in 120. What that does is that keeps the time of day exactly at 12 o'clock noon. So now if you look right here, the day will not change. So let's go ahead and run it at 300 speed and notice how things are moving, things are changing, time is elapsing, but we don't have to deal with seizures or any that garbage. However, just take note, this does not change the actual in-game time. So for example, right now the campaign map is showing noon, but if we were to go into an actual hideout, you notice it is actually still nighttime. So it does not change the in-raid time of day. So this brings up another interesting use case. So for example, right now it is nighttime. Let's say we don't want to fight this at nighttime. We can't really do anything because we are attacked and we don't want to give up our troops. There is actually another way to handle this. If we use the command move time forward base and then a number, that number is calculated in hours. So for example, right now we are a little bit past midnight. So we probably need about maybe six or seven hours to get to daylight. Let's do seven hours. We let time elapse. It's probably not quite enough, so we'll do it again. This time maybe we'll do three hours and we're right at midday. If we fight this battle right now, it will be during the daytime. We didn't have to change anything else. However, that command is actually even more useful than just that. If you are interested in running time lapse or running tests and you want a very specific time period to elapse. So for example, let's say you want a full year to go by. There are exactly 84 days per year and 24 hours per day, which means there's 2016 hours per year. So we type in 2016, move time forward. Now it's going to move forward a one year exactly and then stop time on the dot, which means you don't have to babysit it. If you're going to run a time lapse for 10 years at a time, 50 years at a time, it's a real pain in the neck to have to check in every 10, 15 minutes. This will save you a ton of time. Now, there's a couple more commands that I absolutely love to use. This is probably one of my favorite. Let's say I want to run some tests where I go around the map and only compete in tournaments, but I don't want to have to worry about micromanaging, dodging enemies or bandits. I can use a command set main party attackable base and the number zero. The number zero means the main party is not attackable. The AI will basically ignore us. We don't even exist. So there's a ton of enemies right here. Let's just go ahead and scoot by them. Okay, they don't pretend we don't exist, but they can't attack us. <laughs> it's basically the same result. Doesn't matter. So you get a nice little conga line going here at least. And what this does is this allows us to crank up that time. So we're going to multiply campaign speed by 50 and we're going to go town to town just looking for tournaments, right? So let's say we want to go to Sargo. Now we can zip around the map. We don't have to worry about being captured. Don't worry about bandits, none of that stuff. And a couple more of my favorite commands. Let's say we want to sow a little bit of chaos in the Calradium. Durthert is currently at war with Sturgia and some minor faction. Let's say we want him to go to war with everybody around him. All we need to do is type in campaign, declare war, Vlandia, base Batania. And just like that, Durthert declares war on the Batanians. And going into here, we can see indeed Batania and Sturgia now. However, we're not going to stop there. We're going to go ahead and put them at war with the Western Empire. Now, when it comes to the empire names, you need to make sure there's no space. Otherwise, it won't work. So declare war, space Vlandia, space Western Empire, one word. And once again, the idiot declares war 
on a third target. So now he's going to have a little bit of trouble with that. Or let's say you're a mercenary or vassal of an empire and you're tired of getting into these free front wars. You can actually do declare peace, space of Landia, Western Empire. That's going to go ahead and super peace between these two. And you can see now they're only at war with Batania and Sturgia. Super peace with Batanians. Now it's only with Sturgia. And we're going to go ahead and do it again with Sturgia. And they are at peace with everybody now. So a little peace and quiet if that's what you're looking for. And finally, for probably the most important part of the guide, I would say, is figuring out how to find all these commands without having to memorize them or type them in manually. So we're going to open up our console command. Let's clear this out. And let's say we want to take over Maranoth. So we're going to type in campaign because pretty much all the ones we've used here start with campaign. We're going to type in give because we want to give ourselves a fee. And you'll notice down here, it pops up with a bunch of different options. So you can either mouse over and click, or you can down arrow and press enter. So we're going to go to give settlement to player base. Let's type in Marinoff. We own Marinoff. We didn't have to look any commands up. We just know that we start with campaign, period. And then it comes up with a bunch of options. So let's go to Marinoff, manage town. So it's got fortifications level one, but let's say we want to increase that and we don't know the commands. We don't want to have to go to Google and sift through tons of pages. We can actually figure it out by just doing a little bit of investigative work. We're going to type in command period building and notice there's three options here. There's add building level, add progress to current building and change current building. We're going to add building level. Now, I don't know the format of this one. I, I do because I've used it before, but let's say you don't. You just type it in. Don't type anything else in. It's going to give you an error and it'll tell you how to correct the format. Now, if you see right here, here, the correct format is settlement name, a line separating the two, and then building. So let's go back in there. We're going to type in Marinoff. That line is the one right above your enter key, and you have to have you have to hold shift to get that one. It's basically the backspace. Hold shift, and it gives you that same line that you need. And we're going to type in fortifications. So fortification. Now notice I didn't put an S there. The spelling has to be exact. So we add the S back on, and there it goes. So in this case, we got fortifications level two. We don't want to have to type it in again, so we just press up arrow. It takes us to the most recent one we did. Enter again, and voila, we have fortifications level three, we're maxed out. We can do the same for all these buildings if that's what we want to do. And let's say we want to declare war on everybody because we're trying to do a bandit campaign and it's a real pain in the neck to have to type it in six or seven times. So let's go campaign, type in war, and notice there's several options here. There's declare war, move time forward, forward <laughs> start player versus world war, or start world war. Player versus World War is exactly what it sounds like. You go to war with all the kingdoms. Start World War means everybody goes to war with everybody. And you have to be a kingdom to go to war. So if, if minor factions don't count in here, and if you're not part of a kingdom, you actually don't declare war on anybody. So what you want to do for a bandit start, we're going to do player versus World War. And now we got 17 plus messages to click off. That's the hardest thing you'll have to do here. But it sure beats having to type in declare war your faction and then somebody else's faction. Or let's say you're running some economic tests and you need world peace so that prices aren't going haywire. Campaign underscore peace. There's two options. We already know declare peace. There's another one. Start world peace. Look here in the chat. Everybody is at peace with everybody. Peace and harmony. Kumbaya. So there's a lot of stuff we went over here today. Don't forget all the commands are in the description. You don't have to memorize them. You can look them up or you can follow the last method we went here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.